you could find Mustakis going on tears where he's hitting seven, eight, nine homers a week when he gets hot in Cincinnati. Hitting between Vado, Suarez, Senzel, all those other guys they have is going to protect him, and he's going to reap the benefit from that. I love Mike Moustakas at 109. At 109, you're talking about him going behind guys like Andrew Benatendi, Hinjin Ryu, Sonny Gray. Nelson Cruz. I I, I like Mustakas here. I think that's a good value. Let's talk about Danny Santana. Danny Santana, I, I I'll tell you, his profile. Okay, the cons. He could be a one year wonder. But if you do the research on him and you listen to the scouting report from last year when he was a relative nobody, um, all of his scouts from previous stops talked about him having something special. And they talked about him just not fitting for that team. Last year he got an opportunity. And we all talk about this. This Fantasy baseball is about opportunity, right? So, last year when he got his opportunity with the Rangers, who, by the way, are much improved in their own right, right? Um, What did he do? Well, he hit 283. He had 28 homers and 21 stolen bases. He played all over the field. And was rewarded with, in the offseason, being given everyday playing time in center field. So why are we talking about it at the corner of the field? Fair. Well, guys, last year, Santana played 44 games at first base. He played 17 games at second. He played nine games at short. He played 65 games at third. And he played a bunch in the outfield. I'm not going to get into it. So he's eligible, depending on your league format, definitely at corner infielder, definitely at first, definitely at third, and in the outfield. Twenty-eight homers and twenty-one stolen bases. Out of a first baseman, you've got my interest. Throwing these hit 283 last year? Now, you might be biting into a fart burger. You might be right biting into a, a total... One of the you know, what makes baseball great, right? The one year wonders. But I don't think that's the case. This guy's still young enough. He again is given opportunity. Maybe he doesn't t- hit 283. In six years, he's a two, in six years, he's a 264 hitter. I'd take 264 out of him if he gives me another 28 21 homer season, homer stolen base. Would you guys agree with that? My point, I'm not being far-fetched here, right? In the 11th round, 12th round of a 12-team draft, would you be happy with 21 stolen bases and 283? Let alone the 28 homers. I'd be happy with that. That's what I'm talking about. This guy's a value. Especially where he currently is being drafted.
Trey Mancini, 104.3 next year. Yuli Gurriel, 113. Carlos Santana, 128. Kingery, 179. Dozier, 167. Andrew Hart, 221. Encarnacion, 176. Justin Turner, 155. The next tier. Down to 35. And we're not... Well, we can spin through these. Guys, I, you got me rethinking Trey Turn or Trey Mancini. And I'll tell you, um, I'm gonna revisit boys numbers look great, right? 291, 35 armors. I like that he's an Irish, 27 years old. I just worry about him getting pitched around. That's my whole point. That's why I... I don't know. I think I have him appropriately ranked. Maybe a touch low. I've got a few guys ranked lower than... ADP lower than him than... than he is. But... Again... He jumped... Now, you can look at this one of two ways. Looking at the bell curve, right? That's it. So, he came up as a 24-year-old back in 2016. Uh, only 14 games. We're not going to talk about that too much. 2017, he hit 293 with 24 homers. Like I said, as a 25-year-old. In 2018, he dropped all the way down to 242, which is a bit alarming. Again, repeated the 24 homer output. But then in 2019, he really kind of had a career year, Malpow, to your point. 35 homers, 20, 200, excuse me, a 291 batting average, 106 runs, 97 RBIs on, let's be honest, a shitty team, right? It's fair feedback. I'll have to revisit where I place him. Um, I I think he certainly... I have him as a 13th rounder currently. But, you know, I really like Yuli Gurriel, too. And Andrea and I have talked about that a lot as well. Um, I don't think at 113, um, 104 for Mancini. I don't think those... I I think those are good values there, right? Um, As I said earlier with Bregman... I plan on treating these Astros case by case. Just like with Bregman, I think Yuli Gurriel's track record speaks for itself. Um, He's hit over 290 in each of his last three seasons. He did see a spike in his home run numbers last year with 31, which is... Not usual for a 36-year-old, 35-year-old, excuse me. Um, I look for that to take a turn south, but I still anticipate him having... I I think part of that is him being really comfortable stateside now. He's established that he's a 290-plus hitter. I think he hits around 20 to 25 homers. He's a good value here. I got to move on quickly because I just got seven minutes left. I don't know if Arnie and I are coming on tonight. I think we are. Um, he had some showings tonight, so please come back at nine. Um, I will let you guys know via type if we're not planning on being on. But the intent is that we are. Quickly, um, let's talk about Miguel Andahar. And I'm cutting guys out now, guys, so I apologize. Miguel Andohar, his ADP is 221. 221. He's a 23-year-old. Andohar established himself as one of the best hitters in the game and one of the best lineups in the game. Hitting 297, 27 homers, and 92 homers. Or 92 RBIs. 
He did so in the Bronx. Last year, what was it, a sternum? He had a weird injury that set him out all year. I look for him to fully be recovered this year. And it, what, he'll be going into his age 25 season. Um, this is a guy who could be a real steal. I think I got him at 297 in our slow draft. 25 this year. It's funny because, and I don't have it. Well, I, I guess I can't get it. But I'm doing for time. I don't want to do it. People talk about Luke Voigt. People talk about um, Gio Urshela. Those guys aren't going to play if Andohar's healthy. Andohar's elite bat. He'll hit right in the middle of that lineup if he's healthy. Um, I don't want to waste time. I just have five minutes. I do need to get off here right at nine to, or eight tonight because I need to eat if I'm on with Arnie. But I do want to talk about a couple of these guys here in this last tier. Um, specifically, Christian Walker. I know in the past I've not been an advocate of Christian Walker. Actually, I've been quite the opposite. His ADP is 206. I like it basically around 18-ish. Give me 259 and 29 homers every stinking day. I At this value, just like last year, I liked him at the value he was at at the beginning of the year. I feel the same way about him in that regard. My advice about Christian Walker, draft him, flip him. Pick him back up. That's what I did last year. I drafted him. I traded him. And when he got dropped, I picked him back up. 28 years old. I like Christian Walker. I think he's good value. Let's talk about, and this is going to be the last guy. I do want to talk real quickly about a couple prospects. Um, Nick Solak. 246, that's an interesting spot to me. You're talking about the 20th round or free, more or less. Hit 293 last year, 116 Major League at-bats. Total between the Majors and the, the, excuse me, Triple A. He had 27 homers last year. I like Nick Solak. He's versatile. You can play him in a number of different positions. Um, and it looks like he's going to get an opportunity to play there. So that's my breakdown. I kind of had to, it's, it's good though, right? Cause you want to front end it. Um, I had 50, 50 is probably a little much, but let's talk about real quickly before I get off of here. Let's talk about prospects. Usually corner infield is pretty tough to, you don't get a whole lot of, you don't get a whole lot of prospects at the corner infield position. Um, But there are some guys here, particularly at first base, it's hard, right? Um, Let's talk about some of these guys. I talked the other night on my prospect show about Yoshitomo Tsutsugo. Uh, He profiles predominantly as an outfielder, but they're talking about him getting some splits at bats with Yandy Diaz. If he does profile as a third baseman, I think he is the cream of this, air quotes, prospects class. Um, <laughs> Vic. Yeah, I know. I don't never go overboard, right? <coughs> um, I, uh, of this group that I'm about to talk about, I think he has the biggest impact. Whether or not he profiles as a third baseman slash corner infielder is yet to be seen. But I really like Yoshitomo Sutsugo. Um, the next guy for me is Ryan Moncastle. Um, Lenny's talked about him quite a bit. This guy has prestigious power. Um, where he plays, I don't think he's a third baseman. I think he profiles more as a first baseman. But um, it really will depend on uh, what he can do with the batting average, right? So I think he gets called up this year with that young Orioles team. And I think he sees a good bit of at-bats there. Um the jury's still out. He will hit a lot of homers. It could be 200. It could be 250. I don't know. 